If you own an electric car or have been thinking about buying an electric car, you'd likely know that at the moment charging in public is a lot more expensive than charging at home. And recently, especially since the war in Ukraine and the energy crisis, prices have been rocketing in costs. In fact, if you pick the wrong electric vehicle public charger, you will pay way more than it costs to fuel up a petrol or a diesel car even at a motorway service station. So today's video, we're gonna be talking about why some of those public charging companies need a break, why some of them cost more than others, and how you can avoid paying a lot more than petrol and diesel owners. Now I'm sure everyone is aware we are on the tail end of a worldwide energy crisis, meaning that cost of energy all around the world has gone up significantly. Public charging costs, of some networks have only just recently announced an increase in their prices as wholesale prices are coming down. So what is happening here? Well, we have actually just seen the first energy company for home energy actually decrease some rates. Now that Octopus Energy on their Intelligent and Go have decreased their rates slightly on both those rates. More information at evnic.com forward slash energy. But the, we are seeing some energy companies reduce prices. So why is it not happening in the public charging sector? Business energy is still costing a ridiculous high amount and public charges and some businesses pay 20% VAT on their energy rather than 5%. That's to do with a couple of things, uh, but some businesses are over a certain amount of, of use energy, so they pay 20%, but public charges, public uh, charges that you use to charge your EV, they are counted not as electricity delivery, but they've counted as a service, which you can't undeniably argue with. They are providing you a service, so therefore they pay 20% VAT, not 5% VAT. And let's remember, they might be selling you energy but they have to pay for other things like ground rent for that charger, maybe rent share with the person whose car park it is. They might have had to buy the land, uh, fit all the services like the electricity services and the cabling to it. Uh, the charger, maybe a 24 hour call center if you need help. Uh, maintenance if the charger goes wrong. Maintenance if someone vandalizes it. And then some weird thing that people get really upset about in this country, which is uh, profit. Now a lot of charging firms, believe it or not, don't make any profit. What, 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 what? I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous at a pound a kilowatt hour, but there is a lot of factors here. Now, bear in mind that their cost of energy has gone up, so they are paying more to buy the energy which they are selling you. They could also do a couple of things as a business. Now, the way that they buy energy is different to the way me and you buy energy. They can buy energy for hedging for the next four, five, six, 12 months of their business. So they know roughly how much energy they use and they will buy energy ahead of time. Basically banking a pot of gold, which gets taken out every time that you use that charger. Now they could hedge in the correct manner. They could hedge when prices were low, but lots of energy and then prices suddenly go high, then they need to buy energy at a high energy cost when those old credits have run out, which means they could have bought loads of energy uh, when it was cheap, then the crisis kicked off, making energy prices go high, they had no credits left and went, oh no, we need to buy some more credits. Now that could have played off two ways, they could have bought loads of credits when they were expensive and now they've started to fall, they're still stuck with the expensive energy they bought previously, or they might have not bought enough and then prices carried on going up and they had to keep hedging, um, you know, gambling whether they're gonna keep buying and buying and this is where the problem lies, is if they don't hedge correctly, their prices might be fixed for a lot longer than the energy crisis and the wholesale prices take to come. Now, some of these charging firms, they are looking to build size to sell off to another company. Let's be honest, that's the way any business who's not making any profit may work. They might say they're doing it to grow size, which could also be true, but usually most of these companies are looking to sell off to a bigger partner. They might not say that now, but that's the future of most of these charging firms. Maybe not some that don't spend any money repairing their charger. You let you work out which company that might be. You can leave that in the comments below, which one's the most unreliable one you're finding at the moment of this video. The other thing to consider is some energy companies have hedged in buying solar and wind farms. 
and that means that they have a little bit more control over their energy. So what they might do when wholesale prices have gone high, they'll be selling that wind and solar energy back to the grid at a higher wholesale price, meaning that they can discount their charges by that hedge bet. I actually personally think that all EV charging, sort of public charging systems should have a canopy with canopy, that you eat them, uh, with uh, solar panels over the top to keep you dry, but also feed back the grid and where sites are very, very, very windy, maybe a couple of wind turbines nearby that store up a storage battery actually on the site of the grid charger so they don't have to sell it back, they can actually store it and use it on their own chargers. Again, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Now, if you can charge at home, and we'll get back to public charging people only in a minute, but if you can charge at home and you only use occasional public chargers, then my advice is to not worry about chargers that cost a pound a kilowatt hour. And that is because if you're doing just maybe five long journeys a year using public chargers and most of your driving is done from home charging, the cost that it costs to charge on a public charger is reasonably irrelevant. And that is because your cost per mile is still way cheaper than anyone else driving petrol or diesel cars. And you'll often find that if you are only doing these occasional journeys, you don't have a lot of time to go and find the best, cheapest charger. And sometimes you might want a charger that is the most convenient in the best location, has the best service station with shops or food. Think what's the most convenient. And sometimes if you're in a rush, the most expensive chargers tend to be the ones with the least amount of people on them, which means they are always free, as in, no one's ever there, as in you'll be on your own when you pull up and you can charge in peace and tranquility. Uh, I look at the cost per mile and for the very, very few long trips I use on public chargers, it's really worth it. Now, if you do charge at home and think, well, it's still expensive to charge at home, if you're paying at the time of recording this video more than 7.5p per kilowatt hour, um, even 9p per kilowatt hour, then make sure you check out evnick.com forward slash energy, where there's a list of the octopus deals and all the tariffs explained in little videos. The prices might not be right in the videos, they change all the time. But check out those videos. There's also a code to split £100 with me if you sign up to Octopus Energy. If, however, you can only charge on public chargers, that is your main source of charging, that is for slow charging, fast charging. Um, you might have some work charging thrown in there, but it's it's mainly public charging that you're using. Then it's really, I mean, I'm telling you to suck eggs here, but it's really important. You do your research on which chargers you use. You don't want to use a charger that is maybe three or four times more expensive than a charger maybe two miles down the road. That is where, you know, if unless you're, you're only driving an EV, purely for environmental reasons and you have a big pot of money and you only care about the environment and you've got this big pot of money, then let's be honest, the majority of people even caring about the environment, we still have a budget of what we can afford to fuel a car with. And if it's cheaper than fuel, even better. If it's the same price of fuel and environmentally conscious, great. But the majority of people can't afford to keep paying way more than fuel on public charges. So my advice is do some research on what charges are the cheapest, which networks are the cheapest, or maybe just write down a list of which networks are the most expensive. There's also some things that you can do like joining charging networks or charging clubs for a subscription amount. Now, if you do charge a lot on the public, and even some people who charge at home who do lots of public charging, joining one of these subscription services could actually save you quite a lot of money because they offer a subscription charge for so much more, so much a month and they'll lower the charging rate by as much as some of the networks 25p a kilowatt hour so it can be very 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 beneficial so i advise you check that if you go do charge in public and you can find free charges that's cost neutral nothing free the big question is is there any free charges left in the public let me know down in the description if you're in scotland i likely know that there's some around Yanju, but i'm looking more for the uk if there is still some in scotland though i would like to know where they are which places are still offering free charging in scotland and mainly which charges in the uk if any network still offers free uk charging now if you are looking at buying an ev and this video has scared you a little about the cost of charging and you're worried is it more expensive to charge an electric car than 
using fuel, then check out this video that contains a spreadsheet of working out the cost per mile difference between petrol, diesel and electric.